Welcome. Thank you so much for being here today as we start off our Monday with another Beacon Career Conversations. I am Leslie Perry from the Professional Beauty Association. I'm joined in the background uh, with my colleague Paige Peterson and she's helping moderate the Q&A today. So if you have questions, please, please, please send them in. We would love to address as many as we can today. And I am so excited. Uh, to be able to see your face today, Mr. Jay Ladner, super glad to have you as a guest today um, and just really looking forward to the conversation and sharing the knowledge that you have in you. So thank you so much for being here. I want to thank you and everyone at PBA for being such a force in this industry, for always sticking up for stylist. And I am so pumped to be talking with all of the beautiful professionals because whenever I was in hair school I always said I was a professional and not a future one so I'm <laughs> super pumped so let's dig right into it like how did you know when did you know that the beauty industry and hair and all that goes with it was what you were meant to do so I found myself um, performing at a young age and growing up and I was a dancer professionally and a performer professionally before yeah, I started I did not know that and it explains yes. that make, like, so much makes more sense for me yeah. right now <laughs> in a and good way. that's in why I way. love like touring and you know like teaching and just you know letting people know that it's okay to be yourself authentically you and so in 2008 I um so 2007, I got injured as a dancer, but I always did hair and makeup. I, all, I have three sisters, like my stepmother would have me do her hair. Like I was always doing it. I was doing it for like shows and events, like for everyone. And I met my husband and he was like, Jay, you're like a bartender, but you have a blog, you have a fashion blog. When blogging wasn't cool, I would talk about hair and like just, fashion and I would do photo shoots like back in the day and he was like you love hair you you have your friends over at your place all the time you're doing hair like why don't you go to hair school so the fun fact was is I <laughs> went to Paul Mitchell the school in Tampa three times and never signed up and then finally Vince was like I'll go with you if you need support like I'll go with you I was a bartender at night like I just knew like I had to work and I was, and I've been that way ever since I was 16. Cause I was like kicked out and, you know, trying to find my way through life. So I went with him and then that day I signed up and it changed my life forever because I, I realized that that was my niche. It was my calling. I understood it. I had a great, great education from Paul Mitchell of the school, Tampa um in 2009 and i'm just like so thankful that i met vince and he kind of like opened my eyes because it was right in front of me i just never it was never a right time for me so i always tell people now as a mentor and a coach figure it out like if you have to go to night school go to night school like don't wait if you feel it inside your soul do it but i found myself always being a hairstylist before i was even a hairstylist that's like a common theme that I'm finding yeah. as, as we talk to people that it's almost like it, it chooses you. You really didn't even choose the beauty industry in a way, yeah. like it pulled you in. Yeah. And I feel like so, I'm just, it's where I'm supposed to be. It's mm -hmm. like where I'm supposed to be. And then within the beauty industry, I mean, there's so many different avenues and that's something we love students to hear too is, Yes, when you go to school, you get your license and then you think, oh, I'm going to go work at a salon or I might rent a booth space or do whatever. But like, talk about your journey because you had been you know, a salon owner and then like packed up everything and moved across the country yeah. and doing so many things. So talk about that journey and all the different aspects that having that license, we say that license to create really yes. does for you. Yeah, so it all starts the unlimited possibilities of this industry all start with the license. And I will say, you know, I'm going into my 11th year in the industry. And what's so wonderful is that I was woke before I even knew what woke meant. Like I, I was so hungry because I have had, you know, situations in my life 
statistically, I shouldn't be where I'm at. You, you know what I mean? Just how like life kind of paved its way. But I stood up for myself and I was like, obviously my energy, what I put out in the world, I'm going to take my pain and turn that into, you know, giving back. And right from school, I just hit the ground running. I, I asked if I could be a part of things. My energy was there, right? So I think in the beginning, you have to have that energy. So I had an amazing mentor, Alan Kemp. He's still in my life. He still checks out on me. He still is like, what are you doing? Like he's still there <laughs> in my life. But, you know, I was fortunate enough to have him in my first salon in Tampa, Florida. And from there, you know, when I was in school, I was in phase, um, phase three. So I was like running the salon the last three months and he was a learning leader there. And he was like, I know you're going to be a salon owner one day. And I was like, no, I, I like, I didn't even want it. I was like, no. So I, I worked with him. He mentored me for a year and a half. And then I had to move because of the military. And when I moved to North Dakota, he, he taught me, sorry. So Alan gave me the keys my first day and was like, mm -hmm. you're going to manage the salon. Cause he's like, I want a new school point of view. I'm going to teach you the background. I'm going to, I'm going to push you to understand numbers and how to lead and all of that. But I want a new image and you've already have a blog. You're, you're like passionate in school. You're a go-getter. So he gave me the keys and I was leading people who were <laughs> leading and learning people who have been in the industry for 15 years or more. And they were so hungry. He redid the whole salon. Cause I walked in and I was like, no, I'm not working here. It's outdated. Like I can't. Right. So he did it in a week. He revamped everything. So I had a great mentor and that's something I want everyone listening and tuning into to understand that reach out a closed mouth never gets fed and no one knows who you are unless you tell them. So speak up and find a mentor that's going to hold you accountable, tell you the things that you don't want to hear and push you forward. So from that moment, I went into owning, um, managing salons. So I managed a salon in North Dakota, but in the meantime, I flew myself to New York city. Um, because of my blog, I wrote about a designer in London handbags. Um, and I got invited by the accessories council, um, to come out and I was just writing. Right. And I was sharing it on Twitter. Instagram wasn't a thing then like all of that. So I was like stalking people on Twitter, like show it. If I wrote about them, I like tag them a hundred times. Like you have to be a force if you're really want to get somewhere. Um, and at the time, this is around 20, uh, 2012 and 2013, I reached out to a production company in New York city that ran fashion week. And I said, I will take out the trash with passion and purpose. Please allow me in the doors. And I was also writing, I got hired on to the accessories council. So I was writing about like up and coming indie designers and talking about hair. And then I was, you know, taking out the trash and setting out chairs by my third season. And I'm still managing a salon in North Dakota. By the third season, I was the manager of the production company. And I, I'm telling you, you have to start from the bottom. You have to put in the work. Like, I remember when I did photo shoots the first three years of my career, I did it for free and I would be on set for 12 to 16 hours building my credibility, building my credibility and spending time asking everyone, like, how can I do better? What can I do better? I took out the trash at Fashion Week for a whole year, the two seasons. I just took out the trash, looking cute, listening really paying attention and just being someone that was like a positive vibe, right? Like you're never good enough. Like you're never too good to take out the trash or do the things that no one else wants to do because it builds your credibility. Fast forward, I was in Minot for two years and then we moved to um, Dayton, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And now think about it, I was 24 years old. <laughs> I managed one salon for two years and, but I knew that I had something within me and Alan Kemp allowed me to find that person. And he still mentored me while I managed a salon in North Dakota. 
And when I got to Dayton, Ohio, I opened my first salon at 24. After six weeks of living there, no one knew me. But I knew how to connect because being a military spouse, you, you're you thrown into these situations where you're uncomfortable, you don't know anyone, and you're forced to get to know people. And because Dayton, Ohio was such a huge military base, what built my salon first was just me and one other stylist. I was in 700 square feet and the military base allowed me to connect with them being a fellow military spouse and my salon started booming. And after a year of owning that, I opened up on the corner location to 4,000 square feet and I grew a team of 15. But I showed up on days where I was exhausted that I thought I couldn't do it I had a bit, I, my business coach, Passion Squared, Nina Kovner. Nina, I love Nina. Life. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I had people, even though I was at the top of my salon, I still had accountability partners. I found mentors. I learned. I failed. I allowed myself to grow and I put myself in the room of the people that I wanted to be like right? I just put myself in the room and I did the stuff that no one else wanted to do. So I hope this inspires everyone listening that there's unlimited opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you just have to be a yes person and you have to build your credibility. And once you do that, it's unlimited. Now I had my salon for seven years <laughs> and I looked at my husband and I was like, LA is calling. We're going to sell the business. And he was like, okay. And I was like, it's time. And I was, ed I'm now an educator. I've been an educator for five years. I started with Paul Mitchell because I was homegrown. And then now I have Jay Ladner Education as an independent artist. And I was at ISSC. Which we were so happy. We were so thrilled to be part of your journey. Guys, I thought I could never, ever, that was, it was a dream, but I was working in the background. It was already building around me, right? I kept that. I just put myself out there and I, and I have words to say, and I work on my craft and I, I get my mannequins heads out and I dream and, you know, I really work on placement and patterns and, you know, PBA gave me the opportunity to stand on the stage with Gina Bianca as an educator at ISSC, as an independent educator. And I think that's what's so wonderful about you know, PBA is like really looking forward to the future. Um, but yeah, so I sold my salon a year ago. I moved, packed up, left everything behind and I went to LA and I'm living my best life. Six months into living here, I work for Lady Gaga. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? But there's consistency, right? There's building the credibility. It's being uncomfortable. It's having, you know, that fire lit. It's the mentors that hold you accountable. You know, I'm the person I am today because of my phenomenal mentorship. And that's why I stand for this next generation of stylists, because I know that one day I may work for you. You're listening to this and I may work for you. And listen, I want to. So I want to set the industry up. I want to set you up for success and I want to just pave a new way for you. I want to make it easier. I want to make, you know, new opportunities that never existed. You know, like I, I feel like it's so important that we set up the next generation of hairstylists. No, it's so and true. <laughs> and what's, what's so interesting is the more interviews that we've been doing with, uh, with these industry professionals, the more I'm hearing the consistency of, say yes say yes to the opportunities where you might even be afraid and think in your side like inside yourself we're our mm -hmm. own worst critic and we have to get out of our own head and stop ourselves from saying no i'm not good enough or no i'm not ready or no i'm too young or no i'm too old or whatever yes. like how do you how do you calm that down i i think <laughs> i you know one i go to therapy i think that as artists it's very important um, that we're always checking in with ourselves that, you know, we have the ability within us to create unlimited possibilities. And it doesn't matter what happens in your life. Prom I promise you, like I I'm standing here 
I live in LA. I, I like have the most phenomenal career. It took work. It took hard work. It took showing up. It took saying yes, but you have to work on yourself. And I'm always constantly checking in with myself, having my accountability partners on my side to say like, I'm not feeling okay. Like what's going on? Like it's okay to not be okay, but you decide when you kind of move and shake to the new direction. So I'm always doing a pros and cons list. Um, and listen, I had it made like all my friends in the beauty industry was like, Jay, you built this magical salon and you were like, no, I got to go. This was amazing. It built my credibility. I sold my salon to an amazing guest. Wow. Yes. I was like, what? She was my guest for five years and I set my team up for success. I led them to now they run their own chairs within that salon. But I think like being uncomfortable and remaining in survival mode allows me survival mode. A lot of students live in that space, right? <laughs> um, allows you to show up for yourself because it, you, you have to. Like I, and too, I will say, let's say that I was standing in 2008 or 2018 and 2019, I was standing in front of, um, can you hear my son? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. He's like, can you okay? <laughs> He's yelling. I'm he like, can come on. He can be. Uh, yeah. So, um, we love to see so, the whole family as part of the quarantine. Right. Up, right? What did you say? But, uh, yeah. But I will say in 2018, 2019, I was standing on stages and I was looking out and I saw these beautiful young stylists and I couldn't relate anymore. And I knew that I wanted to get uncomfortable again. I wanted to, I, I was sitting too comfortable and I felt like if I didn't get back into the space that they lived in, that I wouldn't be able to truly at 32 years old, if I can do this, whatever age you are, and you're just getting in the industry, you can do anything. It's being uncomfortable. So I got uncomfortable. Like I let go of all of that to understand what it's like to build in a very big city. And listen, I'm going to bring this up really quick. Yes, I have followers on Instagram, but guess who I talk to? Paris Silas. <laughs> so it's hard building. So I wanted to put myself back there. So whenever I'm standing in front of a crowd of seasoned stylists or new, fresh baby faces coming out the gate or people who are wanting to do it, that I could relate with them and say, you're not alone. Follow me. I promise. Get on my back. I'm strong enough to carry us. I'm going to show you the way to build, the way to do it. So I wanted to get uncomfortable, but I always check in with myself and I always do pros and cons lists. Like, is this something I want to do? Can I do it? And when I take my cons, I write what I'm going to do about the con. Is there something I can do about it? I love that. Just I like it. to read ball. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, and I love like that idea too of I think everyone and even students can relate to, and maybe during this time of quarantine, you're feeling like, gosh, I can't get back to school. I'm losing all my motivation. Like, how do I I have to like motivate myself or find within me a way to challenge myself mm. and get excited about it again? Because you want to be excited about what you do every day. Yes, absolutely. And I feel like my quarantina gig right out the gate you know i went strong and i was like i just didn't get into art like that you know and art on my mannequin heads and i colored one mannequin like nine times she's fried dyed and laid aside i was like i have to buy new ones um but you know like if you truly love it right invest in it like get into it and it's okay to not be okay so for the first two weeks i was on a puppet and then i went silent and it's okay to not you know be on social media or feel like you have to be out on the camera all the time like it's okay to dial back check in with yourself adapt and evolve your life like i always am adapting to my surroundings and evolving to what i need to do and it's an art form which i am writing a book about um but I feel like you always have to be willing to adapt and evolve to whatever's going on, but it's okay to not be okay. And just speak up and ask 
you know, for help, it's okay to ask for help, especially for our new slay queens and kings coming out the gate, like ask for help. A closed mouth never gets fed and no one knows who you are unless you tell them. So speak up, speak up. All right, I have one more question before we open it up to some other um, questions from the audience, but it's it's kind of like what you're talking about where this the whole idea, we all see people's highlight reel on social media and we think, oh my gosh, I wanna be Jay Ladner. I wanna be, I wanna have all the followers and I wanna do all the fun things and all that. But talk to me though about like what that really means. I mean, like it's not just like you're having fun posting whatever, like there's intention behind it and there's a lot of work behind it. If you could talk about how to build your brand, especially using a social media platform and because our Beacon students, part of the application process is building, starting to build their brand on Instagram because we want to help them yeah. have something to build off of their business in the future. So talk a little bit about that, feeding that, that social media beast, so to speak, and that it's not just the highlight reel. I mean, there's a lot that goes with the highlight reel. Yeah, so I'm going to start with number one, be authentically you. That's it. Like be you, find your niche, right? And you're allowed to adapt and evolve it. But come out the gate strong and showcase who you are. Showcase who you are. I had an Instagram that had 20,000 followers on it. And it was 2018. But I wasn't saying anything. Mm -hmm. I wasn't saying anything. I had I call them squatters because I was being shared <laughs> by everyone else. Like all these brands were showing me, but I had nothing to say. I was just doing pretty hair and I wasn't having a conversation and I deleted it and everyone was like um uh <laughs> like the brands were like uh we're sponsoring you and I'm like you know why I don't care like I I'm not being me like I'm not saying anything it, like I need to share my soul like I I gotta get out of this I'm I'm over the lights I'm over like all of that so I deleted it and I started it and after a year, I went from zero followers to like 140,000 followers because I was authentically me. I was sharing what works. I was telling my secrets. I was consistent on it. You know, I was posting six times a day, six times a day. I, yeah. So, and, but I was, I had my camera out. I knew Instagram videos were coming in hot. So I like figured it out. And when I look back at my first videos, I'm like, oh, but I did it in my videos now. Like it takes time, right? Like to be an educator, you have to build credibility, right? You have to have experience. You have to understand what it's like to be behind the chair. You have to relate, right? And share your story. So for me, I think one is be authentically you. Number two is show up show up and speak your truth so you had it's now with instagram i'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on instagram because facebook i'm not really great at um i just and my business is in instagram but um i think that you have to your stories can never die and you have to be able to tell a story it's a story right so if you think about how instagram's like built you have your like grid where you're going to like in your context and what you're going to write and you need to tell a story no longer do we live in a world where caramel balayage is a thing right our guests coming out the gate are smarter than ever especially mm -hmm. in quarantine all my guests are like oh i want a 9v i'm like girl don't like okay <laughs> you're trying to talk my, the talk but yeah i want to exactly. level seven with others <laughs> Yeah, but, but what happens is that you're consistent, right? So if you're going to post once a day, post once a day, and then add in two when you're comfortable. And then find out, you know, like your pictures, if you feel like you're not good at it, just do it. And the more times you do it, the better you become, right? Like I remember, like I, Nina Kovner, I went on to her site and we did this live and she pulled up my very first instagram in the photo and she goes jay look where you started and i was like yeah but i showed up and i found my rhythm so don't be afraid to experiment right you have to have your stories they can never die right say something 
tell a story, show your life, show the salon, do walkthroughs of the amazing space. If you're an assistant, like make sure that you're like showcasing what your magic is, right? On the grid, slide into people's DMs. If you're building your clientele, like tagging and all of that. So I feel like the number one thing is be authentic, authentically you. Um, but you have to be consistent just in like your career. You have to be consistent. You have to show up and you have to have something to say. You have to have something to say. Love it. Great, great advice for everybody watching this, considering applying for Beacon. And even if it's not for Beacon, just great advice to build your brand and a clientele as you finish school and, and get into the work. So Paige, I am um, gonna ask you if there's some questions that others are asking so I don't hog all the time, because I usually um, do. Really quick, really quick sorry, I, I wanna tell everyone, I spend, I'm not lying, average of 40 hours a week on Instagram, on mm -hmm. editing videos. My phone has 60,000 videos on it. 60,000 video. I have to like delete and put it into the cloud because it, I do short clips and I, you know, like I'm consistent. And even if I don't have an assistant, because right now my assistant's back in Florida, um, I don't have my assistant. I have a tripod. I set it up. I, you know, like I record it. So I spend about over average of 40 hours or more on building my brand and like just creating content. And some stuff I can't use and other things I do. And, you know, you just got to create, create the content, have mm -hmm. the content and then really work on it. And I'm glad you shared that because that's the reality of it. Again, we <laughs> see the highlights and the beautiful stuff yeah. that you're putting out there. But behind the scenes is 40 hours of intentional, intense work every yes. single week to get the clips that you put on. So yes. thank you for that, that like yep. reality check. <laughs> yeah, it's a full-time job. Get ready. Full-time job on top of another full-time job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I am here. I you. am as I'm like just watching and loving and uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like I wrote these are um we we don't have any questions because I think everybody's okay. just so enthralled and <laughs> <laughs> in tune with you um and i've said this to you before jay you just um there is such a light about you and that you um are here with us today to share that light and one thing you said that i'm like he is doing that all the time and i love it you said showcase your magic and you i hope you know that you do that on the daily and sharing that with our community and um just your positive energy and your message. So thank you for your light and your magic. Thank you. You're making me emotional. No. <laughs> I just like I, I'm just, it's heartfelt. I'm That's okay. It's heartfelt. <laughs> thank you so this much. I know I felt it. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm I'm always like the mushy, huggy teddy bear. I love it. Thank you for <laughs> Virtual hugs, virtual yes. hugs. Yes. I, I just want to thank you so much. I think that in this world, especially now, you just have to lead with love. And Amen. when you understand darkness, you will always appreciate the light, right? Absolutely. So it's like, you have to move and shake. You have to be nice. Like, I didn't say that, but rule of my 10 ways to slay, number six, is be effing nice. <laughs> like with love, like show up and be thankful. Truth. For all opportunities. Like I, like I literally know what it's like to have nothing, oh. and I appreciate everything. And I know that leading with love and being grateful, leading with a grateful heart, and just understanding people, even if you don't understand them, um, and just embracing people for what their differences are, and like. Mm -hmm. If you understand darkness, you will always appreciate the light. So, Paige, thanks. So yeah, much. you're so welcome. You're so welcome. So the How 10 ways to slay, where can, can the students get that? Or where is that available? Or is that part of a class? Or how do they get your 10 ways to slay? Okay, so I did <laughs> my ad ISSE, but it's for free on what? my, it's the link in my bio on my Instagram at it's Mr. J. Ladner. It is for free. 
You just click it, you put your little email in, and then you can get that. So Jay Ladner, uh, yeah, so the um, my IG, and then go to link in bio, and then Tin Ways to Slay is on there for awesome. free. I have other free content as well, education. I have four rules of connection of how to like navigate your guest experience, because that is crucial when you're building your brand. Um, and yeah, so I have other free content as well. Awesome. Thank you for that. And any last words of advice for students as we close it out, as I have taken a little extra time today? So I want to say this to you. Anything is possible. You are magical. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. Despite any of your struggles in life, you've come this far. So keep pushing. If you need anything ever, hit me up. My cell phone number is on my Instagram. So light it up. Um, I will reply back. I will be a mentor. If you need a mentor, like just build your credibility. Don't rush it. Don't rush. Take your time. You'll have plenty of time in this industry to thrive and grow and, you know, become an educator. Anything's possible. This is a beautiful industry that's ready to welcome you and just know if I have anything to do with it, the industry will be better for you. Uh, love you. <laughs> love it. Love you too. Thank you again for making the time today, for sharing your magic, as you said, and as Paige has said. I mean, we just, just adore you and I just love the fact that you make time for us and for the students and really, truly believe in bringing up this next generation and making this industry even better than it was when we got here. So thank you so much for that. Best of luck as you continue your career path in um, LA. Don't forget about us. Oh, you Hope already know. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're praying that we can have a live in-person event at ISSE this year too. So uh, yes, yes, very yes, much so. Yes. For sure. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Um, as you know, Beacon, the application period is open. You can submit your applications now at probeauty.org forward slash Beacon. We hope to see you all there um, and just can't wait to meet everyone. So have a wonderful rest of your day and just an amazing week ahead. Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. Love Take you. care. Love you too. Love see you later. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.